Good morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Ed, you with us? Hey, good morning, Mike. I'm here. All right. Good morning, Ed, and good morning, everyone else, and welcome to the CEO Roadshow webinar series where we feature small and mid-cap stocks that may be undervalued or have other upcoming catalysts that make them a potential long-term investment opportunity. Today, we're joined again by Mr. Ed Carr. He's the founder of U.S. Gold Corp. They're a publicly traded U.S.-focused gold exploration and development company that trade on, on the NASDAQ under the ticker USAU. And uh, before I turn it over to you, Ed, um, everyone, please note at the bottom of your screens, there's a Q&A button. You're welcome to click on that at any time during the presentation. Type your questions in there, and we'll try to get to as many as we can at the end. Um, and with that said, uh, Ed, I will turn it over to you, and uh, we can talk about these exciting times geopolitically and what it means for gold. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Really appreciate it. And uh, thanks for the introduction. Thank you, everyone, for attending this U.S. Gold Corp webinar. Uh, I'm going to apologize in advance, Mike and everyone. I am on the road, so if my connection sounds a little um, uh, poor, I uh, apologize in advance for that. But as you point out, Mike, wow, what a, what a difference a week can make since our last webinar. You know, we look around the planet, the world, these incredible geopolitical events, how the world has completely changed. And when I look specifically at the price of gold, you know, here we are the 1st of March, 2022. Gold's now, last I looked, $1,927 an ounce. So really breaking out on gold. And I tell you, in my opinion, the story is not the geopolitical events. I've been talking the last several months that the theme of 2022 is and is going to be inflation. And that's what we're seeing. These geopolitical events are just adding to inflation, adding to a lot of uncertainty, and certainly adding to safe haven sort of assets like gold. But the big thing we also have to look at is the price of energy, uh, West Texas crude is right now about $103 a barrel. Uh, certainly, in my opinion, has the propensity to go a lot higher. And if the world gets together and ultimately decides to squeeze Russia out of the global energy markets, now that could be 7 million barrels a day of production that would disappear. So I think you would rapidly see oil prices head towards 150 maybe $200 a share. It's going to be pretty interesting. We've got uh, President Biden delivering the State of the Union address tonight, and we'll have to keep a close eye for how many times he's going to mention the word inflation in that speech. And, um, you know, what's interesting, gold's breaking out, oil's breaking out, and also the U.S. dollar is breaking out. That definitely tends to happen when there is a flight to safety and a lot of uncertainty. But for gold and the dollar to break out the same time shows the real relative strength here of gold. Someone asked me, Mike, just earlier today, they said, oh, I, I think I've missed it. I've missed the upside on gold. And I kind of had to chuckle because I think that, you know, we're probably in the second inning of a nine inning ball game. You certainly have not missed it. I think gold's going a lot higher. I think we're going to be $2,500 by the end of this year and then go significantly higher in the future. And it's all because of inflation. Um, we see many commodities breaking out. And what's really interesting is, you know, this gold price that has moved, the silver price that's moving, even copper, certainly oil, it has not yet really translated into the gold stocks. So what happens in these bull markets, and when you look at history, and it's happening right now in real time, these bull markets start with the majors. So I'd encourage everyone, go look at a chart of Newmont. Go look at a chart of Barrick, the majors, the leaders. These are leading. These stocks are rallying. They are breaking out right now. I believe they're going to go significantly higher. Then you're going to see the mid tiers, and we're already starting to see it. That will be the second leg. You know, Equinox, Hecla, the mid tier producers, look at them. They're already starting to move. And you can look at indices like the GDXJ, you know, which is kind of more the mid tier and the juniors. The GDXJ made a nice double bottom around $38 a share. Uh, we're currently above $44 a share, and I believe going significantly higher. 
And then the third group that will really start to move and has the potential to move the most is the small cap exploration and development companies like U.S. Gold Corp. Most of these stocks and specifically like U.S. Gold Corp have not yet started to move. They're still down around their 52-week lows and, you know, with gold breaking out to soon a new potential all-time high. So these will be the third leg up. I think as geopolitical uncertainty continues to, uh, uh, to you know, extend around the world, investors are going to get very nervous once they start subscribing to things like the Fidelity Gold Fund, Wellington, BlackRock, et cetera that retail money will then flow into this gold sector. There's still a tremendous amount of value here. So if you're an investor out there and you don't have exposure, you know I don't care if it's U.S. Gold Corp., go look at a whole universe of names, junior names, and start building some positions now because you know this market is starting to move, but it's still very, very early with a lot of significant upside ahead, in my opinion. So let's get into the presentation. We're gonna go through it very, very quickly. Um, I will be making some forward-looking statements, draw your attention to this slide. This whole presentation is online on our website in case you, uh, you wanna look at it. So with US Gold Corp, you know, we're a publicly traded company on the NASDAQ, symbol is USAU. We've got good liquidity, cash in the bank, no debt. And our value proposition is really based around our flagship project in Wyoming called our CK Gold Project. It's a great project. We put out a PFS um, pre-feasibility study December of last year, shows a 1.44 million ounce deposit, proven and probable reserves. We're looking at over 100,000 ounce production profile. Um, this deposit comes right up to surface, outcrops immediate revenue potential, We've got expansion to, uh, uh, to, to really increase this. And it's got very favorable economics with an $800 cost and um, great location being in the state of Wyoming. In addition, we've got three other exploration projects in the company. Let's go to the next slide, Mike. And so here's our four different uh, projects we have in the company. You see on the left slide, left side of the slide, that's the CK Gold Project in Wyoming. We have near-term production potential. Um, this pre-feasibility study we put out shows a very robust project, $323 million NPV, 39.4% IRR, and we're pushing that forward now. On the right, three different exploration projects, two in Nevada, Keystone located on the Cortez trend, Maggie Creek on the Carlin trend, and we have a project in Idaho called the Chalice Gold Project. Let's go to the next slide. So I'll give you a little financial overview of the company. Uh, as I mentioned in my intro, you can see on the stock chart, we are certainly trading closer to our 52-week low than our 52-week high. I believe currently we're around $7 a share, giving U.S. Gold Corp. about a $52 million market cap. You see down that bottom right share structure. So we have just under 7.5 million shares of common outstanding, uh, some warrants. You can see all the different strikes down below and um, no debt in the company today. Very, very tight share structure and um, management insiders, couple of key select shareholders own around 20% of the company. So I think very well aligned with the shareholders. We did just recently close in February a $2.5 million registered direct was very uh, few shareholders, some long-term committed uh, followers of the company. And you can see we have two analysts currently cover us. Uh, their stock price targets, 12-month targets are significantly higher than our uh, market price today. Let's go to the next slide. So just to give you a little idea of our valuation, this is a peer group comparison. A couple other companies that have development projects uh, in Nevada or uh, even Idaho, Utah. Um, and you look, key takeaway here is look down the bottom right. You can see this group above us. They have a mean uh, trade around 0.4 times price to their net asset value. U.S. Gold Corp at our current stock price trading around 0.16. So if we could just get up to this mean, you know, it could easily be a doubling of our valuation. And um, we think that's very, very possible. Let's go to the next slide. So a little note on ESG, you know, environmental, social, and 
governance. It's a pretty hot topic today. On the environmental side, uh, we're very committed to low carbon footprint in Wyoming, um, you know, really working with all the local stakeholders and ranchers on our project and very committed as well to water conservation. That's a big issue out west, looking at using our potential open pit as a water storage facility in the future. Center column on the social side, we've had zero work-related safety incidents. Uh, we've got a good investment locally. We opened up an office in Cheyenne and use a lot of Wyoming-based consultants. We also do a lot of engagement, outreach, have a lot of meetings, trying to educate everyone on the project. On the right, on the governance, 80% um, of our board is independent, 20% female representation, and we're very committed to uh, doing annual reviews. Let's go to the next slide. So we're gonna start with the project, start in Wyoming here with our CK Gold project. And uh, first thing I'd like to point out is our location in the state of Wyoming. Wyoming's a great state for a natural resource development project like this. Um, there's a lot of mines in, in uh, Wyoming, whether they're coal mines, uranium mines, just below us, there is a, uh, a big uh, granite quarry owned by Martin Marietta Materials at Mines Aggregate. So the state really understands extractive industries and oil and gas, et cetera. We're located in the Southeast portion of the state. So if you wanted to get here, you could fly into Denver, rent a car in about an hour and a half, you could literally drive right on top of our deposit. If you look down the bottom right, you can see we have two state of Wyoming sections, uh, section 36, you see the outline of the deposit. These state sections in Wyoming, are, are um, designed to, they have a, a mandate to maximize revenues of those sections. So the state of Wyoming has a 5% NSR on this project, a royalty. And if we can get this project into production, uh, the monies that we will generate be millions and millions of dollars. This will go to the state of Wyoming educational budgets. And they're running some pretty budget, big budget deficits because of what's been happening in the coal industry. Um, so they could really use the revenues. Uh, we're on all state of Wyoming ground. So there's no US federal government involvement. And that's important because a lot of companies have great projects, maybe in Nevada on federal government ground. They have long permitting processes. And with this current administration, it's been a little more difficult. Uh, we don't have any of those challenges here. Our primary regulatory authorities are in Cheyenne. Uh, we plan on filing a mine plan permit by mid part of this year. We believe this will be about a 12 month approval process. No federal government involvement. So there's no BLM, there's no EPA, uh, there's no US Army Corps of Engineers. We've been deemed non-jurisdictional. So we think that gives us a much faster pathway to production. Great infrastructure in Wyoming. You see, we're just three miles north of Interstate I-80. There's also a rail line and rail spur there. So in the future, we could ship diesel fuel in by rail and ship concentrate out. Let's go to the next slide, please. So give you an idea of economics on our project. We put out the full pre-feasibility study December 1st last year. Full documents on our website if you want to go look at it. Here are some of the highlights. We now have 1.44 million uh, proven and probable reserves. That's important. Reserves you can really, you know, uh, uh, hang your hat on. Very strong economic confidence there. This is going to be a 10-year mine life of this project with a 20,000 ton per day production rate. We will be producing a gold copper concentrate, and we're going to produce around 108,500 gold equivalent ounces per year. We have an $800 ASIC, that's an all-in sustaining cost. That's quite attractive. And, uh, you know, gold at $19.27 today, we'd be throwing off, you know, $1,127 an ounce uh, of uh, EBITDA times 108,000 ounces. So you're looking at a project that at current spot prices could throw off $115 million in EBITDA per year for 10 years. Uh, 221 million of initial capex will build the mill. This will be a uh, will produce gold copper concentrate by flotation, and uh, 15 million of sustaining. If you look down below, when we did the PFS, Goofs to send used 1625 gold and 325 copper. That gives it the 323 million dollar NPV. However, current spot prices are well above even the top line with 1927 gold and. 455 copper. So at the current prices, 
the uh, the NPV pre-tax is about six hundred million dollars, and the pre-tax IRR is you know sixty five to seventy percent. And it just shows you this project has great leverage to a rising metals price, which I think it's going to go potentially even higher. Let's go to the next slide. So here's our reserve estimate right out of the PFS. You can see that 1.44 million ounces of proven improbable. We got this nice high grade uh, zone. It comes right up to surface surrounded by a lower grade um, deposit, but has a lot of expansion potential. Let's go to the next slide. So here's some other highlights out of the PFS. Again, the full documents on our website. That document was done to SK1300 as we are a US listed company. Um, and again, just showing you know $323 million NPV, 39.4% pre-tax IRR, uh, payback just two years, obviously a lot less at current spot prices. Uh, if you look over on the right, you know, we're production rate of 20,000 tons per day and uh, ASIC $800 an ounce, going to create well over 200 jobs, probably a couple thousand jobs during the construction phase. So nice economic shot for the greater Cheyenne area. Let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, so we did a lot of engineering um, in our pre-feasibility study. Uh, we, we really, what I would call, we did a, a pre-fees heavy, not a pre-feasibility light, um, tremendous amount of work went into this. And so if you look on the left, you see these images of our mill, uh, George B., our president and CEO, he has tremendous experience. You know, George has a 42-year career in the mining industry, has built some major projects around the world. And he reached out to some of his contacts in Santiago, Chile, firm called Alchemia, and they've done detailed engineering. So we know exactly our plant design. It's going to be primary crushing, going into sag and ball mills, then flotation. So we will produce a concentrate and send that to an offsite smelter. This is important because there'll be no stack on site, you know, no nasty emissions. We don't need a tailing dam. Uh, we don't envision um, any cyanide at this time. So this is a, a pretty nice uh, environmentally friendly mining project. And then we're going to have dry stack tailings. So we will compress the tailings, recycle the water back into the system. In addition, we've had major advancements. We've secured a lot of land and a right of way from our neighbor private rancher for this project. Um, I've talked about our P1, P2 reserves. We did get credit for the gold, copper, silver in our PFS. And this deposit, it's hosted in granite diorite. And that granite is really nice looking rock. You know, the core looks like your kitchen countertop. So this is very, very valuable aggregate in the local market. Uh, Martin Marietta Materials, our Southern neighbor, that's what they mine. And our rock looks really good. We've done a couple aggregate studies. We did not include, we didn't get any value really for our aggregate, not much in our PFS. And we believe there could be a lot of upside for that aggregate. The PFS did mention we have 30 million tons of potential aggregate and it sells in the local market for 16 to $18 per ton. So we'd like to get some credit for that into the feasibility study we're working on this year. We're doing a lot of field work. We did last year into this year for feasibility study and ultimately plan on filing a mine plan permit this year. Let's go to the next slide. So our field work from last year, you know, we drilled a bunch of holes. These were for geotechnical studies, hydrology, uh, engineering, pit slope stability, et cetera. These assays will be coming out the next couple of weeks, uh, months. So keep your eyes uh, peeled for our news flow. Um, as we get these assay results, we will be releasing those. And um, this is all going to be setting us up for a position to file our mine plan permit this year. Let's go to the next slide. So a key takeaway here for this project as well is that, you know, when George B. came on board as our president and CEO, he really wanted to put a value proposition around what we know we have currently in the ground. So that's what the PFS was all about. And you can see the outline of the deposit on the right here uh, of this image. That is our 1.44 million uh, proven improbable ounce reserve. But the deposit's still open. 
It's open at depth. It's open down to the southeast. And if you look at the image up on the left, that's an outline of the pit. You can clearly see some drill holes we've already had, clearly encountering mineralization below the pit, um, clearly encountering mineralization to the side of the pit. So we know we've got really good resource uh, expansion potential. And um, in the future, we want to uh, um, it potentially expand the size of this overall reserve. But bottom line, this is a clean and simple mineralogy, very easy deposit for George B. to build and put into production. Next slide, please. So final takeaways uh, from our CK Gold project. Look, we're going to have a lot of news coming, uh, a lot to talk about here. We do have our drill assays from last year's field season. These will be coming out in the next couple of weeks and months, so watch for that. We're moving the project right now towards a full bankable feasibility study. So this final engineering will allow us to move this project towards permitting construction. I've already talked about the aggregate. We think that could provide some really nice upside into the feasibility study. We've got some very nice, we believe, attractive potential financing options for that CapEx. The state of Wyoming might put up some debt financing themselves for project development. We've also been in discussions with various vendors that have some nice attractive terms. Um, we're looking at using our, our big hole in the ground. This will be an open pit project as a potential pit lake water storage facility. Uh, water is a big issue out west. They need more water and water storage. So uh, this could be very viable. Uh, permitting, we plan to permit this, we hope by the mid part of this year. So keep your eyes on that. We think that could be potentially a 12 month approval process. So by mid 2023, we have a permitted uh, facility, take us about a year, George B tells me to build the mill. So that could be towards the end of 2024 and into commercial production in 2025. So that's the CK Gold project. Go to the next slide, Mike. We're going to go very quickly through our Nevada and Idaho projects. Start in Nevada. These are all exploration projects. So here we don't have a deposit. We don't even have a drill hole, but they look very perspective. Nevada, we got two great projects on two of the premier gold trends out there. Keystone is on the Cortez trend. Maggie Creek is on the Carlin trend. Heart of North Central Nevada and big elephant country. Let's go to the next slide, Mike. Start with Keystone. Zooming in here to the Cortez trend, our northern neighbor is Barrick, you know, Nevada gold mines, you got the Cortez Hills complex, pipeline, you know, gold rush, ET blue, very prolific area and Keystone looks very similar. Let's go to the next slide. So it's a big property package for us, uh, 12,000 acres, 20 square miles, 650 mining claims, federal government ground, BLM, all of our claims are in good standing. We are approved and permitted for a plan of operations. Um, we've got uh, 100 acres of disturbance. So we are really good to go. And we've been hard at work at it, Keystone, over the last several years. Started out with claim consolidation. This is the first time one company has controlled this entire district. Moved on to mapping. Hired um, a very experienced gentleman who worked many years for Barrick to map this entire district. Went on to geophysics, geochemistry and then scout hole drilling. And the drilling looked extremely perspective, great looking rocks here at Keystone. So we think that there are multiple world-class discoveries just waiting for us. Let's go to the next slide. Show you a little here on the drilling. So the stratigraphy looks very, very perspective. Great looking upper plate, lower plate rocks. We got this key wind band unit five all over the project. That's the primary host for Cortez to the north. Um, all of our drill holes have hit anomalous gold, so it shows us the golds in the system, the intrusives have pushed it out there. And what we want to do now is drill into one of these high-grade feeder zones. We're quite confident it's there. We've hit some of the highest recorded pathfinders like arsenic in the state of Nevada. So a lot of smoke, and when there's smoke, there's usually fire. Let's go to the next slide. So we had a really good drill hole in 2019. Um, we think we're probably drilled this one just a little too close to the intrusive. So we want to step out on this one and, you know, keep your eyes on the news at Keystone. We want to get out here in 2022, have an exploration uh, program. And if we can hit a drill hole here, I think it can be very, very exciting for our shareholders. Let's go to the next slide. 
So switching now to Maggie Creek, our second Nevada exploration project. We're on the Carlin trend here, right next door to Newmont's gold quarry. About 26 million ounces of gold have come out of that big hole in the ground. And you see our claim outline. Let's go to the next slide. So we drilled two holes here last summer uh, on our southernmost claim boundary. You can see our target area here in this image, drilled 4,440 feet, and it was very perspective. We put out a press release. We showed the core. It was that black sooty sulfide, exactly what you want to see. Uh, we had blobs of visible realgar in the core. We really thought that hole was going to run. And importantly, we hit the key Popovich formation at about 1,700 feet. That's the lower plate formation on the Carlin that hosts most of the economic ounces. Most of the geologists thought that the Popovich was going to be much deeper. They were very impressed we hit it so shallow. Um, we think we're right on the edge of something very significant. Want to follow it up here at Maggie Creek this summer. So just continue to watch the news. Let's go to the next slide. Talk a little bit about Chalice. This is our Idaho exploration project. Real key here is we have this historic resource of over 300,000 ounces of gold. We think we can expand upon that pretty dramatically, but we first need to get this permitted. We're working on it right now. Uh, we'll have some more news announcements on this. So just continue to watch the news on Chalice. And uh, once we get those permits, we'll announce our exploration plans. So that's the four projects. Um, talk a little bit about management, the board, you know, great management team led by George B. Talked about his background, very experienced, 42-year career, 16 of those with Barrick as a senior executive. Kevin Francis, a lot of experience, as does Eric Alexander. You know, independent board, all mining industry veterans, and a technical advisory team, really second to none relationships that George B. brings to the table. So next slide, Mike, we can kind of conclude and You've got an opportunity today, U.S. Gold Corp, no geopolitical risk. You know, we're not in any of the stands. We are not in Africa, anything. This is, you know, great projects in the United States of America, Wyoming, Nevada, Idaho. You've got real value in our project in Wyoming. I believe CK is worth more than our entire market cap today. Company with cash in the bank, you know, very tight share structure listed on NASDAQ. And I think, you know, uh, a company and a project whose time has come, this gold market's just starting to build. And we're going to really start seeing this thing take off in the uh, in the next couple of uh, weeks, months and years. So that's it, Mike. More than happy to open it up and see if we have any potential questions. Thanks, Ed. Yeah, I got, uh, got a couple here. First one from William. Um, he, he's asking, do you see assets shifting into crypto now as an alternative uh, inflation hedge? Uh, look. Assets, certainly crypto really, really rallied the last couple of days. Bitcoin specifically was up over $4,000. And I think that that is more due to the fact that the Western world is freezing Russia out of the SWIFT banking system. So, you know, probably a lot of money is going to move via crypto. And that's a nice thing about cryptocurrency that I'm certainly a big fan of. You can't just freeze anyone out of it. Um, but as an inflation hedge, my only answer is, I just don't know. You know, Bitcoin hasn't been around long enough, nor has any of the cryptos. They haven't been proven in any higher inflationary environments. They could be. I mean, they very well could be. But gold is a time and tested two plus thousand year, you know, uh, instrument, which is always, always shine during inflationary periods. Great. Thanks, Ed. Uh, next question from Andrew. How long do your drilling activities typically last every year? So on all of our projects, we can typically get out here in the summertime, uh, generally around June, July sort of time frame. A lot of them are mountainous and get snowed up. So we need that snow to melt, the projects dry out. And then we can usually dry, uh, sorry, drill until the end of November, early December. You know, we usually demove right around Thanksgiving. Great, thanks. Uh, next question from John. Um, what, let's see, what, what's this, how, how long ago do you drill at all your properties every year or pick one to focus on each drilling season? Yeah, the last couple of years, we've really been focused in Wyoming at our CK Gold project. And it's just a matter of budget. We're a small junior exploration company with limited funds. We think if we can advance our CK Gold project into permitting and then ultimately construction and production, 
that will throw off a tremendous amount of cash flow to be able to fund all of our other exploration projects. So we'd much rather do that than you know, dilute ourselves with our equity price down here and closer to a 52 week low than high. Great, thanks. Ed. Next one from Rick. When is the what is the most optimistic time frame on starting production at CK Gold? Yeah, I touched on that a little bit. I think we're going to file the permits mid part of this year. Let's figure 12 month approval process. So by mid 2023, we might have an approved permit that would allow us to start the construction of the mill. That would take, let's say, 12 months. So by the end of 2024. So I think into 2025, you could be in commercial production. Thanks. That next question. Uh, from Ernest, and he asks, what are the biggest catalysts for USAU this year? Look, there's some great catalysts coming up. Um, look at our drill results coming out of Wyoming from last fall. So those should be out the next couple of weeks and months. Certainly announcing filing of our mine plan permit, I think will be a major milestone for the company. We definitely want to have exploration programs uh, at Maggie Creek and Keystone this summer. So watch those. And if we could hit a drill hole at either of those projects, it can be very, very exciting. Okay, last question here from Graham. Uh, when do you start drilling again this year at CK Gold? So we will start drilling as soon as we can. Realistically, you know, Wyoming is cold and snowed in right now. Um, probably sometime June timeframe, I think could be realistic uh, to start drilling at CK this year. Great. All right. That is all the questions we had for today. Ed, any uh, closing remarks? Look, as I, as I said in my opening, Mike, you know, I'd highly encourage everyone just continue to watch this sector. This sector, it's starting to play out just as we've scripted it. You know, the price of gold is starting to break out. The majors are starting to move. The mid-tiers are even starting to move. And the juniors have not moved yet substantially. So you still have a window of opportunity to start building positions. If you like U.S. Gold Corp., great. If you don't, great. Go find some other companies, but you want exposure to this sector. Inflation is not going away. If you have not gone to our website, I'd encourage you to do so. It's here on the screen. Sign up for our news releases. You know, Watch the SEC filings. Continue to monitor the company. Reach out to management anytime. And certainly tune in in some of these webinars in the future so you can get an update on our progress. Thanks, Ed. And thanks, everyone else, for your time and for joining. And as always, these replays will be available this afternoon at CEOroadshow.com. You can also register for upcoming webinars there uh, on our webinar schedules page. They're gonna be, uh, we're going to be seeing Ed every week on Tuesdays at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time to answer any questions you may have and to learn more about U.S. Gold Corp. Obviously, as always, please visit their website, usgoldcorp.gold. Thanks again. Until next time, Ed, take care and stay safe. Thanks, Mike. You too. Thank you. Bye.